Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How you guys and girls doing? Today is an important day in history because we're going to be talking about object-oriented programming. Now I'm sure if you're working with C++ you probably heard this and you heard the term object and, and you, you probably freaked out. You're like, oh god, what is this? What is an object? Oh shit. But it's not that scary, I promise you. So I'm going to show you today by with code and with uh, some drawings just to explain to you what it is okay and this is a video this is kind of an introduction to classes I'm not gonna show you how to make a class here that'll be the next video but this video is just gonna be a little intro to that so you're prepared and you know why we're making classes and what the use is so let me just tell you something like I have some code here I'm not gonna code a lot but I'm gonna code a little bit so object oriented programming so what does this mean? Well, your programming is going to be oriented towards objects, I guess. You're going to be programming with objects. Now an object can be many different things and it can be scary or it could be fun or it could be anything in between. So let me just show you. So what you're used to is you're used to raw data. You're used to int age equals 23. Uh, string name equals search and if I include uh, include string and if I also include a vector uh, vector so we have a few things here we have a string class and a vector class okay and if I create a string this is a string object but this is just an integer. But still, before I go deeper into that, let me just tell you that this is raw data, right? You're in main, you have this this main here. Although you're structuring your data, you're trying to make a person now, okay? You're trying to make a person. So you might make a comment, person. So one person has an age, has a name, uh, has a std string addre address like this. And it might be something, something, something. So here you have some kind of data that all represented represents one person. Okay. Now if you want to have several persons, you might make a std vector, and you might have age here, ages, and you might make a std vector uh, with uh, std string and names, something like that. Okay. Int. Sorry. Int. So. This is also structured. So each these are parallel, right? So they're going to be parallel. Vector on position zero and this vector in position zero and this vector in position zero are going to all, or in, index zero is are both going to represent the same person. Index one, index one are representing another person, and so on. It's still kind of structured and it's raw data, but it's all in main like this. Now, another thing I want to just tell you before we get started is a vector and a string. They're objects. They're a typical example of an object because someone has created the string class and someone has created the vector class. They're all standard libraries now, uh, meaning that they're kind of standardized in C++. So everybody uses them, or mostly people use them as a standard functionality of C++, but they're still classes. There's something you can create on your own. And when you use that class to create something, that thing is called an object. So a string is internally basically a char array which is can be a bunch of things right a bunch of characters in an array okay char array is a bun bunch of characters in an array basically and somehow someone created a class to make that simpler to to create something structured code where you can create an object of it and you can use all its functionality name dot append back begin and you got a bunch of things clear you can do a bunch of things with this data in name okay so it's an object with a bunch of functions attached to it but you don't see that as a programmer you just use it with the ease of using it right so that's basically what an object is you can think of it as structured code which is abstract that it's it's kind of behind the scenes that you create and then you you create an object of that that code uh, and, and it will just automatically give you this give you this amazing piece of piece of whatever <laughs> which you can use with with uh, functions that you create so let me just show you 
than in images. So a let's go back to good old paint. It's really hard explaining object-oriented program, program, oriented programming uh, because you're used to just simple variables. But what you can do is you can create an object which is a composition of all of these uh, beautiful variables. So for example, let me create a, like we said, a person class, right? So this is a person class, this whole box here. As I showed you, a person can have an age string name, but what we want to do is at the end, we want to make a person uh, person one and we want to give that person an age 28 uh, surge maybe an address maybe a bunch of other things and then we want to be able to say person one dot uh, change uh, age and you can give him another age like this and you can do a bunch of things person one dot add to phone book something 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 boom so you have a bunch of functions attached to this person one and the person has a bunch of data attached to it and it's all because of object oriented programming so you can create objects and then you can manipulate them so this object would be like a little box template a template okay you can think of it as a template like a blueprint for a building that blueprint itself is not a building but whatever you create using that blueprint will become an actual building. That's what we're doing here. So classes are going to be your blueprints. And what you create from those classes are going to be your objects. They can be person, uh, they can be a building, they can be a car, they can be anything. So just think of it like that. Class is a template. What it creates is an object. So there's an age here, there's a name here, there's an address here, there's a bunch of different things here, a bunch of different things. And this, all this data, when you create a person, you'll be creating all this data in this structure. And then you have a bunch of functions attached to it as well that you can call using the name of this object. So I hope I'm explaining this properly. So what we do in object-oriented or programming is that we create a bunch of these objects objects can be within each other and and uh, they can all relate to each other in different ways they can inherit from each other and become smaller parts of different objects and so and so I know it's a lot to take in but I just want to tell you that if you give it enough time to sink in it will and you'll understand it you'll you'll understand why it's so important because this gives us a whole different dimension to work in you can create anything for example let me give you one more example if we create a car we want to create a template for a car, okay, like this. Now, what does a car have? It has four wheels, right? But what is a wheel? Is it an integer? Is it something else? No, a wheel can be a bunch of different things, right? So let me say car. We want to create a car. A car can have a registration number, which is probably a, an, uh, a string because it has integers and numbers and everything. Then it probably has a model which can be a string. It has a, a power, which is probably either a double or a integer, something like that, something like that, whatever. What can a car do? Well, a car can drive, which is a function. A car can be uh, bought, I guess, something like that. You can, you can do something like that, or drive, or, or break. Uh, you can have uh, um, shift gear you can do anything like bunch of functionality so you see I hope you're seeing what I'm seeing okay so you have functionality and you have what it consists of which are the variables so here you have a car but it has four wheels and wheel is a hard thing to kind of use an integer or string for so we create another object for wheel okay and remember all of these classes these these classes are all templates for things so wheel and a wheel can have a dimension, uh, which is probably an integer, um, a functionality, I guess, or a, or a name, uh, string, model, string, size, or that's a dimension. I, I, let's see, functionality. Uh, pump is a function. You can pump the wheel. Uh, you can you can do a bunch of things. Let me just let me just speed through. So that's the same concept, but 
one once we create this template for a wheel, we can add a bunch of wheels to the car template. So the car needs wheels to work, right? So we'll have a wheel, wheels, which is probably a wheel array of four. Okay, so our wheels array is a wheel array of four. So it has four wheels of this type, not integer, not string, of this type. Okay, so when we create a car, the computer is going to create all this stuff. It's going to create wheels. It's going to go to the wheel class and it's going to find everything. And it's going to create four wheels with this template for wheel, this blueprint. And then it's going to put it in here. And then you're going to have a car object in your program which is just a little thing here, a little box, where you can call all of these things and do all of these things that you specified. Just like this, person change age, person add to phone book, person go home, person go to sleep, person whatever you want to do, you can do it. So that's my examples that I can give you. That's the way I can explain object-oriented programming to you. So we're very focused on creating objects, representing real-world things, and also different types of uh, things that we want to do, we can kind of compromise or not compromise them, compress them into classes. And we can create a class and we can do a bunch of things a lot easier for us. So that's basically my, my analogies. And you can also remember, just remember, the class being the template, like the blueprint to a building, and the object being the actual building being created from this blueprint. Now imagine your building blueprint having internal other blueprints related to it like elevator blueprints room blueprints anything smaller and that whole blueprint will be created with all of these other blueprints combined and then you have a finished building that's the way we're working with the car and the wheel two different blueprints one is related in car it's put into car and they're both used to create the whole entity which is the car so there you go. I'm just going to stop talking now. I hope you understood. I hope you could bear with me through this video where I talk a lot. Uh, <laughs> so let's code more talk in this video. I'm sorry about that. But uh, yeah, this was necessary for the next video. So the next video we're going to get into actually creating classes. I'm going to do a bunch of examples and I'm going to show you what are good ways to create classes. Okay, so I really hope this worked out for you. You learned something and that you can keep working hard. I just wish you the best of luck and... Yeah, that's it for now. I'll see you guys and girls in the next one, alright? Bye-bye.